will be to be at our eternal, true home. If you open your Bible to 10 and your songbooks to number 460, your Bible is to Romans chapter 10. And before reading that, I'd like to go over the words of the world's Bible, number 460 in the red songbook in front of you. Number 460, the world's Bible, the first verse reads, Christ has no hands but our hands to do his work today. He has no feet but our feet to lead men in his way. He has no tongue but our tongues to tell men how he died. He has no help but our help to bring them to his side. We are the only Bible the careless world will read. We are the sinner's gospel. We are the scoffer's creed. We are the Lord's last message given in deed and word. What if the type is crooked? What if the print is blurred? I can't help but wonder from a song like this about evangelism and, and in a personal way and in an individual way throughout this congregation in the world that it seems with some frequency that we leave the bulk of evangelism to a few individuals. And the problem with that in addition to trying to, to change the gospel message to support such a view, is that when we look at the world and we say, oh, how dark a place it is. Oh, how America the great is changing. Oh, how we've abandoned our Judeo-Christian background, or we might just say the Christian history that this nation was founded in. That should be followed up with by necessity that Jesus needs to be taught all the more. The more darkness, the more we need the light. But the question then becomes, where does the light come from? Now, certainly the gospel is complete. It is sufficient for our needs and what the world needs. The world needs Jesus. But when you look at Romans chapter 10, of course, we know what verse 10 states, for with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. For the scripture says everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. But when you see in verse 14, you get to the crux of our problem. How then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? Verse 17, so faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of God. When you think about the world, you might say, well, those people aren't going to turn to Christ. But if we're honest with ourselves, we'd say that many of us, if we weren't fortunate enough to be born into a Christian background, and even if so, we're sinners who needed the blood of Christ, destitute and apart from him. And if we could receive Jesus, if we could confess with our mouth and believe with our heart and be saved, so can everyone else. When you consider also in Scripture examples like King Manasseh in the Old Testament and even Saul, who we know as Paul in the New Testament, these were men who, if mankind looked at them, would say, they not only don't have a chance of converting, they have been and will continue to be actively chipping away at God's people. And yet both of them turned to God. In the case of Paul, turned countless lives towards the very Christianity, towards the very Christ, that when confronted with him on the way to Damascus, Jesus asked him, why are you persecuting me? If the gospel is for Paul, the gospel is certainly for all. That includes us, and we should take advantage of the, the blood and grace of Jesus Christ. But consider with me the words of number 460, that if we are the Lord's last message, given in deed and word, it implies two facets there. One, that we are living like lights in this dark world. And secondly, that we're willing to teach it. It may be that you know someone or know many people who no one else in this congregation or around this world who are Christians will ever come into contact with. It may be that you can't or don't feel able to teach them, but somebody can. But first, somebody needs to reach out to them. When you look at the words in Hebrews chapter 10, Romans chapter 10 and verse 14, it's startling and haunting. How then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? What a tragic thing to think that my friends, my acquaintances, are those who will have never heard of the gospel because I was too much of a coward or too weak in my faith to teach Jesus to them. What a blessing to serve God. But let's preach God. Let's teach Jesus. And we can all take advantage of the blood of Christ. Will you go to God in prayer with me? Our dear God and most gracious, powerful, and loving Heavenly Father, we know that it was you who created this world with just your spoken word. We are in awe of your power and your might. We understand from reading your scriptures 
that you have been and will forever be in control of even these kingdoms of men. We pray for your mercy as a collective and as individuals who have sinned and missed the mark in living out your righteous and holy expectations for your people. Thank you for sending Jesus the Christ to come to this earth, to be crucified, horrifically put to death, slandered, beaten, spit upon, because we needed a sacrificial lamb. Help us to be bold in preaching his will. Help us to be strong in our individual walks. Be with Brother Kevin Clark, Lord, if you will, that he comes this next week and he preaches the gospel. Help him to do so boldly, but help each and every one of us to be there, to be examples to the world, and also to invite others to be exposed to the faith, which is the only thing that can save us. Thank you for your son, Jesus, in that way. Be with us as we worship. Help us to have open hearts and minds to study your will and apply it to our lives. Since in your son's name we do pray. Amen. We're now dismissed to our Bible classes.